Hi folks, Petula here. Let's get into a difficult topic today when coaching doesn't work. There are many reasons why coaching wouldn't work, yet I don't think we talk enough about lack of success and failures in coaching. People are sometimes under the impression that the coach is the kind of superhero that can solve any possible problem for them. And then people who might be considering becoming coaches, they are actually somewhat put off because they are not so sure they can become that kind of superhero. But the truth is that coaching doesn't work with everybody all the time. In fact, there needs to have a few conditions in place for successful coaching. And the most important one, in my opinion, is the willingness of the coachee to really be there, to take ownership of their coaching journey. So by sharing this video today, I hope I am contributing to normalize failure and humanity in the coaching practice. And I hope that you feel inspired actually and invigorated on your coaching practice as well, despite and maybe because of all the failures. We've all been there. We've all had at least one client with whom coaching did not work. And that's okay. That's perfectly normal, no matter how long you've been coaching. And if that, you know, if it hasn't happened to you, I would say it hasn't happened to you yet. Now it's important to spot those situations early enough so that you're not dragging like five to 10 coaching sessions with no results. So stopping and reassessing as early as possible is the best for preserving your energy and your client's energy. So today I want to share a story and shed some light on one of the reasons why coaching might not work when the client, when the coachee doesn't want to do the work. Now, before we go any further, let's just level set. What is coaching? It's a process, a creative process in which the coach and the coachee are really deeply interested in collaborating so that the uh, coachee can achieve their full potential. It is a thought provoking process. It is a lot of self discovery in there. That is not far fetched. Coaching is a transformative conversation in which the client really discovers things for themselves. They are doing the talking, they are doing the thinking, they are the ones deciding how far they wanna go, what is it that they are willing to do, by when. The coach is there to support, to help, by providing a structure around the conversation and by acting as a sounding board or as a mirror. For the coaching to work, the coachee, the client, really needs to want it. Buy in, not enough. Take note of that, I'll repeat. Buy-in is not enough. The client really wants to do the coaching. We need them to want the coaching. Otherwise, the session can become something, um, for example, number one, it can become just like a conversation, pretty expensive for a conversation. Sometimes that can be, um, you know, there's too much venting or ranting that leads nowhere. Two, it can become, there can be a lot of silence, not really the type of silence where you're pondering, more the type of silence where you're not really interested, which is something that leads nowhere. Or ultimately, we can talk about certain issues, but really on the surface, not really targeting any transformation, not something that the coachee wants to do or wants to become. That also leads to nowhere. As you saw from the definition of coaching, the client does the heavy lifting. So if there is no interest in actively participating in the sessions, in doing the thinking during the sessions and after even, in putting things into practice and reporting back from the trenches, the coach really has not much to offer. And that is because the coach is not there to give advice or to do things for the client. That has another name that's called consulting. I do find situations like that easier to spot in a professional coaching setting. Now, when you are tasked as an agile coach to help either an individual or teams, how does that really work? I mean, you know, chances are some people are not interested at all and might even be a little bit distrusting of the process. They were just fine. The company decided to do this new agile thing. Why should they even care? I have lots of stories to share on that front, and now I'm gonna share with you one of the unsuccessful ones. 
there was a scrum master there was a you know someone who just became a scrum master someone who was a project manager 30 years of experience type of thing so someone who was considered a go-getter a stellar person all the projects were ending on time and on budget that sort of thing really really a stellar person and they were suddenly promoted to scrum master since the organization was doing an agile transformation and consider hr policies and all since that person was a senior project manager they became a senior scrum master and so they were getting the most complicated uh, teams slash products to deal with um, the irony of it all is that that person didn't know any scrum let alone agility in general so i was tasked to work with them at that point i had been a coach for about five years and i had coached similar cases and i like to think then that i had some uh, experience to help there we actually started off really well we hit it off by acknowledging each other's intelligence and the first sessions were really good in the beginning it was definitely a lot of level setting and attacking the the fundamentals the powerful fundamentals such as what what does it change in our approach in our thinking when we adopt agile do we really need new roles and how does that compare to other types of roles that type of thing and um also what they expected from the coaching so that we had our coaching alliance going on but then what i noticed from observing the person in action with their team is that despite all the amazing conversations they were still acting as a project manager they were defining the tasks assigning the tasks deciding dates uh, and then even other things that have nothing to do with project management itself they were the person speaking the most in every team session and i must admit sometimes almost sucking the air out of the room when i played that back to them they were surprised at first and eventually they realized that even though they acknowledged and understood intellectually what was it that we were working on for quite a few coaching sessions they did not internalize that knowledge there were no new behaviors in there and that was unfortunately what ended up breaking the contract that particular client realized the amount of energy and investment needed to adopt new ways of thinking and considering that they were up to retire in about five years which for me is a long time but for them it was like tomorrow they really uh, they were not interested and they openly said it was not worth it learning all of that now they did not want to feel like a beginner again at that point in their careers and they were even not interested in discussing and introspecting a bit exactly about that. What does it all mean? Now, of course you can probe some more and question that reasoning because every person is a wonderful possibility in themselves. But ultimately that reflected on the fact that no, for that individual, that change wasn't worth it. Now, two important things here it's not ethical for a coach to push or convince anyone you have to work with your client's agenda if their minds their heart their energy is not going in a certain direction there isn't anything that you can do the other thing is that i had a sponsor the person paying me the manager of my client and it was a company doing an agile transformation so they thought that by hiring me people would then magically transform and all become agilists so i had to explain to my client my coachee that i could no longer help them since the three of us were no longer aligned on the outcome when situations like these happen you have to call the three people in the coach the coachee or client and the sponsor because in this case we had a career misalignment for my client a mission misalignment for myself and expectations misalignment for my sponsor those conversations are never easy at first but they really need to happen and they can be quite powerful and, and so useful in the end what usually helps in here though is to have a coaching contract that you can refer back to and also helps everybody to be grounded and rather objective 
But coaching contracts are a topic for another video, another day. So as I end the story, please conclude with me. That client had their full right to stand their ground and make their career choices for themselves. That manager and the company as an entity had their full right of wanting to operate in a new setting and adopt Agile. And my sponsor and my client, they absolutely have the right to end any coaching engagement for any reason. And so do I as a coach, especially when I am unsure on how I can provide value. And the funny thing, that company eventually reverted back from Agile and the project manager was so happy to have fought for their current knowledge and position. It was in the end all noise for them. So be careful when you judge people's reasoning. While we like to think that we don't judge, we always kind of do. So think twice. So that was the story I wanted to share with you today. I hope you learned a thing or two in there and I'll catch you on the next video. Bye. Thank you.